All right. Well, even though Memorial Day isn't until next weekend, this morning I want to talk a bit about memory just the same. Specifically, I want us to consider how we can dissolve our fears of losing our memory as we age by accepting that our mind is perfect just as it is right now, by appreciating our mind as the ever-expandable gift of our spirit that allows us to be aware of the beauty and goodness of life in us and around us in every moment, wherever we are. It's quite the mind. We can do this through the practice of mindfulness. Now, we've all heard the word mindfulness, but today, Let's look at it closer and see what it means. John Kabat-Zinn, the founder of the Center for Mindfulness in Medicine, Healthcare, and Society and at the University of Massachusetts Medical School, wrote this. Mindfulness means being awake. It means knowing what you are doing which takes us to our talk title this morning, which is Be Where Your Feet Are, which is another way of saying be mindful, which is another way of saying be fully present right where you are. We all want to be spiritually awake, right? I mean, isn't that why we're here? Isn't that why we read and meditate? Isn't that why we go for a walk so that we can commune with nature? We're hoping to wipe the sleep out of our human eyes so that we can truly see life as it's meant to be seen. Deep within us, we know that being awake is essential to our being alive in the way that we are created to be alive. In the Aramaic Bible, in the book of Ephesians, we read, Awake, you who sleep, and arise from among the dead, and the Messiah will illuminate you. The Messiah, the voice of truth, the Christ of love, cosmic consciousness shines within our mind and illuminates us every time we're mentally present, mind with our feet, where it shines. And it only shines in the present moment because the present moment is where all life is happening, including our life. If we're not fully present in the moments of our life, we'll miss the holy happening we came here to experience. It'll be over before we know it, and we won't know what hit us. All that's required of us to be spiritually awake is to be present mentally where our feet are physically. Paying attention to what's going on without judging how it should go. Yet being awake and aware of what we're doing and how we're feeling as we go in each moment. This is the very practice of mindfulness, and mindfulness means being awake. We can do it every moment. Now, it might sound like a simple thing for us to do, to know what we're doing by being mentally present while we're doing it. But if our habitual attention was to have such a mind-body awareness and connection, if we 
consistently chose to pay attention to what we were doing in the moment we were doing it. For one thing, we'd never trip over or run into anything. But we do. We all remember my encounter with the ottoman in my living room last year. And we do because it seems that despite the powerful awareness we've heard can be ours if we stay focused in the present moment, right where we are, most of us aren't fully mentally present, right where we are most of the time. It's been said, if you want to be happy, don't dwell on the past, don't worry about the future, focus on living fully in the present. Now, we may not doubt that it's essential to the health of our mind and body and to the expansion of our soul and spirit for us to pay attention to our life while we're living it, to notice what's happening while we're happening. But often, even without knowing it, even when we think we're paying attention, we're actually distracted, at least in part, by something else. Part of our attention isn't where our feet are. Our mind is focused partially or totally on either a past or future thought. All of our thoughts, or at least most of our thoughts, are habitual, and because they are, we're not always aware that we're thinking about something else. Maybe we think we're fully present, paying attention, but we're also thinking about something that happened just a minute ago, or earlier in the day, or sometime in our life. And maybe we're thinking about something we need to do next or we need to do later in the day, or something we need to do sometime in our life. Mark Williams, who wrote Mindfulness, an eight-week plan for finding peace in a frantic world, wrote, now, now is the future that you promised yourself last year, last month, last week. Now is the only moment you'll ever really have. Mindfulness is about waking up to this. So a good question for us to ask ourselves this morning is, am I waking up to that? I mean, how often do I feel mentally awake and alert? How often do I feel fully tapped into and fully engaged with the moment by being attentive and curious what that moment is all about? And how often do I accept mental fogginess as natural and a lack of attention and curiosity as part of the aging process. Now most likely, I know most of us have already talked about this, but most likely we've all walked into a room and forgotten why we were there. I do it all the time. And most of the time we laugh when that happens, even if there's no one else around. And then we go back where we were and start over again. It's really no big deal, right? We've been told it's just one of the signs of getting older. It's possible, though, even likely, that we were all born mindful. As a child, we were fully engaged with each moment, every moment. We were curious about life. We didn't have enough past to distract us, and we didn't worry about the future because it didn't come to mind. When we toddled into a room, we were on a mission 
to have fun. We knew we'd find something good, a toy, a pet, a parent, or something fun to occupy ourselves with, to be excited about, to have fun with. But our being fully present to play in each moment changed for most of us as we got a little older. And I mean not much older. As a teenager, we had a whole lot more to think about. A boy or girl we'd just met, homework that needed to get done, and today, many teenagers with cell phones don't have a clue where their feet are, much less where their mind went. Even so, when a young person walks into a room and forgets why they came, they don't worry that it's a sign that something's wrong with their mind. They know. They were distracted by other thoughts. And it's as simple as that. And so here we are, the age we are now, living in a world that seems to be moving fast and where words come at us so quickly from all over. How often, when we can't think of the name of a familiar person or an object, do we start to panic? Just a bit, or maybe a lot. And as we pause in anxious silence, if someone's with us, they often try to help by offering a word that may or may not be the one we were searching for. But since we can't find it anyway, we either react with, no, no, that's not it. But even if it wasn't, we often feel relieved that the awkward silence is over. I know when I talk to my sister, if there's a pause, we usually fill it in with silly words, nonsensical words, words that just make us giggle to fill in the silence. We try to help each other fill in the pause out of love because we believe that silence is something we need to fear at our age. But maybe we don't need to fill in the silence. Maybe it's more helpful for each of us to wait at least a heartbeat or two, before we offer to assist. We don't need to fear a mental pause in others or ourselves if we don't see it as a sign of aging. But we panic if we lose a word here, a word there, because we're concerned as we age, it may not be long before we lose a whole lot more of them. We're told by the medical world that for many of us, memory loss is inevitable. But author and therapist Shannon Alder wrote this. The true definition of mental illness is when the majority of your time is spent in the past or future, but rarely living in the realism of now. Mindfulness, then, is the cure. And all of us have a mind right now that can be mindful. If we're here and now, our mind can be here, right now. It's up to us. So there's something that we might want to consider this morning if we've been accepting memory loss as just the way it goes. 
is forgetfulness, a sign of our aging or a sign of our lack of mindfulness. Is it a signal of inevitable mental decline or a signal that we're not giving our full attention to what we're doing in the moment we're doing it? Is it an indication that we're headed downhill or an indication of our lack of curiosity and interest in the life that we're living right now? In Science of Mind, we read, man is birthless, deathless, ageless spirit. This leaves nothing to be born, mature, decay, or die. When this thought shall be made clear in the consciousness of man, people will no longer grow old. Life cannot grow old. It is always the same. We don't have to mentally decline before we depart. When we're finished with this earth life, we can leave with our mind wide open and alert and aware to the next adventure. What if slowing down mentally in our life it's a good thing, even part of our divine plan, because it's an opportunity for us to pause right where we are and really see what's important to see. Eckhart Tolle wrote, in today's rush, we all think too much, seek too much, want too much, and forget about the joy of just being. We can bring peace to our mind by keeping in mind that we are perfect just as we are, just by being aware. Just by being alive and taking time to live life as it's happening, puts us in the perfect place wherever we are to experience the miracle of being alive. Sadhguru wrote, every moment there are a million miracles happening around you. Every moment. There is magic everywhere. If you learn how to live it, life is nothing short of a daily miracle. That certainly seems enough incentive for us to be curious uh, and attentive to the moments of our life. We've been given a beautiful, an amazing, expandable mind. It doesn't shrink, it expands with time. And it's capable of paying attention all the time. Maybe we're at the perfect time in our life to practice mindfulness. Because we're more aware than ever before that if we're not fully present, right where we are, we'll miss precious moments of this earth life. And we know. We don't want to throw any of them away. Maybe we're at the perfect time in our life to practice mindfulness because we're more ready than ever to allow silence between words. And when we do, when there's silence, if we don't panic, if we simply let ourselves mentally be where our feet are, who knows what new awareness what might come in to our mind? All the wisdom of the universe, all of it, is available in the present moment where all of it 
is happening. And all that's required of us is just to be there in the moment to receive it. Namaste. All right. And for those of you who need it, I have a synopsis later. <laughs> All right. Well, this is the time of our service when we get to say thank you. Thank you for being here this morning. Thank you for this being a part of your Sunday. Thank you for showing up live on live stream. And if you didn't show up live, thank you for finding us during the week. Thank you. Thank you for sharing this energy of love, this uplifted message of goodness that you resonate to. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. And we're all in this together. So I know you know that for us to be here and doing what we do, it requires financial support. And if you are wondering how to do that, and, or maybe you just tuned in this morning, or maybe you forgot how to do that. Or maybe you might not have been listening when Dr. Jamie mentioned it last time. But this is a new moment. This is a holy moment. This is a moment where if you want to be here in this moment, you're going to know exactly how to support LEC financially. Here's Dr. Jamie, our treasurer. Well, good morning. Good morning. What am I doing here? No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you would love to support LEC, and we would love to have that support, there are several ways you can do so online. You can go to Facebook. Our Facebook page is facebook.com forward slash Life Enrichment Center, and you can hit the donate button. You can go to our website, lecflint.com, and find the donate button and uh, press that, and you can donate via our website. Uh, you can donate via PayPal. It's lec2512 at gmail.com. And also you can uh, send a check to our P.O. Box, which is Life Enrichment Center, P.O. Box 321-294, Flint, Michigan, 48532. And if you're here in the sanctuary, we're going to be taking an offertory while we listen to Grateful by Daniel Namad and Nemo Patel. And then Reverend Stephanie will be doing a gratitude prayer. Thank you. 